Hello Internet and welcome back to Adam's Garage. Today we're going to talk about when your sub hums at you and it's really annoying. So the only reason your sub is going to hum at you is if something is broken on your system. If you've wired everything together fine and everything's worked fine and there's nothing broken anywhere, your sub won't hum at you. However, it's not the end of the world and I'm going to show you three ways of getting around it and how to diagnose where the sub hum is coming from. So there are only two places really that the hum from your sub can be coming from. The first place is in your head unit. Now your head unit is essentially a small amplifier and if it has something broken in it, it's gonna send that into your main amplifier, um, which is then gonna get amplified and you're just gonna have that noise even louder than before. Now it's only really coming from one of two places. So the first thing you wanna do is get yourself one of these cables, which is quite simply an RCA, Ooh, I'm all plugged in still, it's an RCA to phono cable. What you then do is you take your source, i.e. your phone or anything like that, um, you plug it into your amplifier and you see you just you see if that noise or that hum is still there. If it's not, then chances are the problem is with your head unit. Now I've got this Alpine V12 MRV T407 on the bench here that has this exact problem. And I know the problem is with the amplifier because I have my phone plugged directly into the amplifier and I can feel here this sub has a humming noise through it. To prove that this is a grounding issue you can actually make it worse by touching anything that grounds and you will see I'm not touching my, just my finger touching the bench again not moving just my finger on the bench ready I missed but you see the point Touching anything else? Now if the problem is with your head unit, what you can do is actually get a piece of wire, any old piece of wire, doesn't really matter, I think this is like a two mil wire, that's plenty good enough, and you want to strip quite a large amount of the wire from the sheathing. Like so. Then what you do, you take your RCA ports on the back of your head unit, you want to twist this, so that it all stays together and doesn't come apart. Then you want to wrap it in a figure of eight around the outside like that. Then when you plug your RCAs in, it will clamp it to the shielding and you take the other end of this and you put it anywhere onto the body of your head unit. So another way to get around it, if you realize that your amplifier is actually the one at fault, is do literally the exact same thing you want to wrap it round to a point of where it gets clamped, okay? And you'll see that this is still a problem. And then what I'm going to do, I'm merely going to put this on my ground terminal. And the hum is gone. Hum is there. Hang on, let me just put it in a hole. Giggity. And we have no hum. Watch me remove it. Ready? Grounded, not grounded. Grounded, not grounded. So, just tripped over an amp. Nine times out of 10, that way will work. And regardless of really where the fault is, doing it at the amplifier is probably gonna be your easiest solution to the whole problem. Because at the end of the day, your amplifier is grounded to your car, your head unit is grounded to your car, and your RCA shield is just one thing the whole way through. So that's gonna work. However, there is a third way which is essentially the same way. It's just for if you cannot get your head unit out of your dash and your amps are on show and you wanna be a bit fancy pants, you don't wanna show people that you might have a little bit broken. So here's the third way of doing it and it's a lot more effort. So unfortunately, this third way involves opening up your amplifier and I do not recommend you do this unless you are fairly confident with electronics and you understand what you're about to undertake. But I'm going to show you this is actually quite simple. Now the first thing you want to do before opening an amplifier is disconnect it fully from the power supply. I'm still wired in, but the plug is out of the socket. Then you want to wait, and I mean wait, probably the best part of hmm, 10 minutes, I reckon, because your amp is going to have rail voltage in it, and that takes a long time to sink away, especially if your amp is in the you know four or five thousand watt range. That could take up to you know five ten minutes to, to soak away to a completely safe level, um, and then you're going to open your amp up like so. 
So on this Alpine amp specifically, you'll see that the RCA plugs aren't particularly accessible without taking the entire amplifier apart. So what I've done is I've got my multimeter and I've worked out which pin on the cable goes from the shielding into this cable. And now I know that, I can go from that cable to the earth connection point on the uh, power block. Actually, now I think about it, it doesn't need to get the ground terminal at all, does it? You can, because the ground terminal is the chassis of the amp. So I can put it to here, and that'll be fine. Now I'm aware that I'm using the wrong size terminal. However, you got to work with what you got. It's a Sunday, and nothing's open because we're in lockdown. So sue me. Just gonna squeeze the shit out of it. Ow! That hurt my hand a lot, but never mind. That will go on there, lovely. So now, as we turn the amplifier back on, give it 13 volts. You will see there's no hum at all. Nothing. And it still plays without any problem. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then feel free to consider subscribing to the channel. Ordinarily, I'd make videos of like either builds or base cars or shows or something like that. However, I can't because there's a plague that's slowly killing the world apparently. Yay! Anyway, consider subscribing if you found that useful, because I'll probably be doing some more tips and tricks videos uh, for now until the world returns back to its normal self. Putty bye!